This video is to kind of show um, how we'll go about bringing a character that we've made in 3D Studio Max into UDK and make them a playable character. Um, in order to do this you need to have some sort of scripting. Um, right now I've got this one set up, custom character 3 quarter player controller, uh, same idea with the pawn, same idea with the game info. So I had to make these three files and made my own um, folder in the um, development source. If I come in here with my classes, uh, that's where those are saved. Um, so I have those. Um, and here's the default properties for the um, the pawn and then the uh, player controller. So this has uh, where my skeletal mesh, my anim tree, my anim set, and my physics assets um, for my character are going to be. And then my game info file, um, which has this line default inventory uh, first slot zero uh, in the class UT game, uh, and it's looking in UT weapon underscore physics gun. So in the game that I'm going to have, I'm going to use the physics gun to be able to pick up and move things. Um, so that's all imported in and compiled into UDK. And then when I come into uh, UDK, I've set up, um, I, I have all this saved in my maps folder basically uh, under tests. And then I have for skeletal mesh, I have this plague doctor uh, that I've made uh, in 3ds Max. It's rigged with the 3ds Max biped, um, skinned and then animated and brought in. Um, the animations that I have, so if I double click on my Plague Doctor and take a look at him, um, his the skeletal mesh that I have is the uh, Plague Doctor character. Um, the animations that I have, so I had to make an anim set, which I named Plague Doctor Anim Set. And I've only got two animations just for doing this test. I didn't want to do all my animations and then find out I couldn't bring my character in. So I have an idol, which we can just kind of see here. And um, that loops back around. And then I have the characters just kind of basic run um, that I've made for them. And I'll go ahead and stop this. Um, so what I did was whenever I do the um, Plague Doctor character uh, and I double click on the skeletal mesh, it brings up the anim set editor. Um, and so what I end up doing is uh, whenever I have my character and I bring this up, uh, and I'm saving the FBX file, uh, I can save out the animations of that and it'll bring in the skeletal mesh. And then when I import it into UDK, I'm actually not gonna bring in those animations um, through the import. What I'll do is I'll have the, uh, the character and then I'll create a new anim set for this character. And when I do that, it'll create my anim set based on the name and it should create a file for it. So that's right here. Plague Doctor Anim Set. I've actually got uh, some other Anim Sets from when I was messing around with this. Um, but this is the main one that um, my character is using. And so, um, let me drag this back over. So when I do that, uh, this area will be empty. So what I can do is go to File, Import FBX Animation. You used to use Actor X. Um, to get all of the uh, animations in, but now that FBX is becoming more of the standard, um, this is um, becoming uh, what's used, and the plugin for Actor X is no longer used in 3ds Max 2012, uh, 2013, or 2014. So we'll do this import FBX animation, and I will save these out as individual files in Max. So I'll have Plague Doctor Idle, and I'll have the run. And the name here that I have is very important, so I have to keep that in mind. Um, that's the same name that'll come up here. So once I've got these in and I've kind of tested to make sure they're okay, uh, I'll end up just closing out of my uh, skeletal mesh. 
and then I need to um, create my anim tree based on the anim set that I made. So I'm only looking at this one. These two actually are not going to be used. So I've got plague doctor anim set, which will be used in my anim tree. So when I open up the anim tree, I'll get the anim tree editor. So um, the way I set this up was uh, this is the first node that comes up. So as I bring this down, we'll see preview mesh list. I'll open that up, and I'll have to actually add a preview mesh list here, which will give me this preview skeletal mesh, which is my plague doctor. Um, so if I come back to my skeletal mesh and I select it, uh, here this little arrow, when I click it, it will put whatever I had selected um, as long as it's a skeletal mesh, it'll put it here. So then I need to put in my anim sets. So I have all of my animations under one anim set. So I created uh, I created a new uh, preview anim set here, and then I can do the same thing. Go back to the content browser, come to my anim sets. I'll select the one that I want, Plague Doctor anim set and uh, I'll again drop that in. And when I drop that in I then have access up here um, actually it'll be here to whatever animations are in that anim set. So when I start off here I just have this node and to get all of these different parts that I have uh, what I end up doing is I right click new animation node and I need to tell it what kind of node. Well I want these animations to blend so typically the first um, animation that we're going to play is going to be the idle. So the idle that I have uh, will be here. So to get an idle, I'll do a uh, new animation node, blend by, and I'll do a blend by idle. When I do that, it gives me this um, module here, uh, which gives me uh, if the character is idling, what does it do? Uh, if it's moving, what does it do? So for idling, uh, I have this node up here, new animation sequence, animation node sequence. So right now it says none on here. If I were to um, come to uh, plague doctor underscore anim set and drop in idle, you can see this updates and it now says plague doctor idle, which is the same name that I had given my FBX file and whenever I imported it into the anim set. Um, so I basically just add that here and then I've got my moving section so if the character isn't idling, if the character is moving then what do I do? Um, right now you can see the character I have um, well let me show this first and I'll come back to that so I have anim node blend directional so this is based on the directions that I'm uh, having my character go so I'll have an animation node directional and that will be my other node here so I'll drop that into moving and then any animations that I have, I can have them come out of here. So, for instance, if I have the character running forward, it would be a run forward. I can use the run forward, and then what I can do is, what I've done with this one, is I've just changed the play rate to do negative one. So it's going to play my run that I made, but it's going to play it backwards, which works fine for the game uh, that I'm doing. Um, you actually don't see the character's legs, so it's not a big, too big of a deal. And then we have uh, my strafe left and strafe right. Well, right now, since I'm only using one and testing it out, I'm using the run forward animation uh, as my left and the run backward, which is just the run playing backwards, as my right. So I can cycle through these. Um, so right now, you can see over here the character is idling. So if I drag this over, and you can see how um, the control here from zero to one is basically switching between these. So there's my run happening. So um, you'll see that it'll also do blending once I start getting closer to the center here. Um, my blend isn't going to work so well. It's it'll actually it's not going to blend that much. It's kind of just switching from one to the other. But uh, it is actually switching between them because you can see how character's looking that way but as soon as I go he kind of blends over automatically and then depending on once I'm in here you know which 
animation am I, am I playing from here? Um, and this is just to kind of scrub through it so I can just look at my stuff and then it picks these animations based on how they're going. And you can see there's a little, uh, this is only 16 frames, so there's a little play that's going through here. And you can see this one's going backwards. Um, so that's basically how I set up um, that part. So just delete these so I don't screw up anything with my anim tree. So this is my anim tree setup. Um, you know, whatever more I need to do with this, I can add in nodes for doing that. There's a lot of different um, nodes here. So uh, if I have something like getting on the hoverboard for a character, driving, getting inside of um, the, you know, if the character's driving, what happens, basically. Um, so different things like that. They also have these uh, skeletal controls. I haven't messed with these, but just from the names on these, it looks like they're basically uh, allowing me to control different limbs and different parts of the body um, to look at or lock rotation on um, something. So this would allow uh, basically to have my character's head control. So if an enemy or a NPC of some sort gets near, the character's head will automatically look in that general direction. That's what I'm guessing is going to happen with that. Um, I haven't messed with it, so I can't say for sure. Then there's these uh, new morph nodes, so that would be for more than likely facial controls and things like that based on the name. Um, so that's that part. And then after I've gone through and set up my anim tree, uh, the last part on my script, uh, let's see, uh, last part of my script here is, um, let's see, player controller. So I've got skeletal mesh I need, anim tree, the anim set, and the physics asset. Um, I'm not gonna, I don't want to mess up my physics asset that I've already created, but basically what I'm doing is I right click on um, my skeletal mesh and I can create a new physics asset, which I'll just show you mine when I open this up. Uh, my guy's floating up off the ground, so I have to figure out how to fix that currently. Um, this is stuff that's very new to me, so I'm just trying to work around, you know, getting my character in and moving around. I'll fix these kind of bugs later, but um, I've found out that the uh, basically the default um, collision items that I have here for the physics, um, the sphere is the least costly the uh, sphill, which is uh, basically like a capsule, um, is the uh, next most costly. And then, oddly enough, the box is the most um, costly. Um, but I guess that has to do with um, how the game handles box collision. Uh, some things always collide with boxes, whereas the sphere and the uh, capsule um, may not have certain collision uh, with other things like it looks like player characters um, so if I have a box on here and I walk by uh, another character who also has a box it would test that collision and uh, maybe keep them from moving past one another whereas this current setup may not I'm not certain on that I'm still looking into it um, but that's the basic gist of uh, why uh, this one's the most costly it has to do with how the collisions handled from what I've read um, but basically I've got all these different sections of the body so the bipo one uh, I've made really small because it's not uh, it shouldn't really have collision on it but if I remove that it gets rid of all these other ones from what I've seen so I'm leaving that um, there's probably a way that I can make the pelvis the base node but again I don't really want to mess anything up um, and I could probably read through here and see that oh I could just move something down so that he would be down on the ground what's kind of funny is once I've got all these set up the idea is I want to see the simulation that it does. Um, it, this would be used for like ragdoll physics. Um, when I play it, I don't get anything that happens here, but I do in game if I press F for faint, and it's kind of funny. And my character just dies, um, but I'm not. I, I don't want to have the character faint, and I haven't put that in my script to disable that yet. But um, it's kind of funny. I'll show you how that looks. So I've created all these physical boundaries, uh, these kind of envelopes. Um, for my character. And a lot of this is kind of used for hit detection for weapons and things like that. Um, so that's that. So I get that set up. And then to get all of this into the script that I have, um, so this character's playable in the game, 
I need to paste in uh, where this character is. Now it took me a couple of times before I got this to happen because for whatever reason when I saved my package it would save my character in a different location in UDK. Um, so I went through and kind of set things up uh, a different way and it, it was able to work for me. Um, but what I basically have to do is I select my um, skeletal mesh for my character, do copy full name to clipboard, and then whenever I come in my script, everything after the equal sign, I can just paste it in. So I do my plague doctor, I can do my anim tree, my anim set, and my um, uh, physics asset, and save that all out. And then I compile and make sure I don't get any errors. And currently, I'm not getting any errors, which is good. Um, so that's everything as far as getting uh, my player in here. Now I've set a couple of physics. Um, uh, k-actor um, objects in here just to kind of mess around to make sure the physics gun that I'm using actually works. So I need to go to my world properties and make sure I've set custom character uh, three... Oh, I don't know why I named this three-quarter. This should have been third person, but whatever. I know what it means and the name kind of doesn't mean anything as long as I have all of my scripts um, calling these things properly. Um, so I've got that in. Now if I hit play, I can see my character in here. Now I can't actually see that my character is floating, so I've got to figure that out. Um, the nice thing is, is they're about where I want them to be. So I know if I change the floatiness, um, my character is going to be maybe a little lower than I want. But this is a short character anyway, and this is all for just to test uh, something out. So I can see that I can play my animations by running forward, left, right. And since I don't see my feet, these kind of work. Uh, and then it, when I'm not hitting anything, I go to my idle. Um, and then if I right click, I'm able to pick up the barrels and knock things over, which is the main idea for what I wanted for this test. Uh, I'm not close enough to that. Ugh. That one's kind of heavy. Oh, look at that. I couldn't do that again if I tried. Um, that's basically it for getting my own character in. Um, at least a very basic character in a very basic game. Um, there's obviously a lot more functionality that can be put in here. Um, it's just a matter of going through many sites and many different uh, forums and figuring all this stuff out. So hopefully you found this uh, somewhat educational. Um, yes. Uh, these scripts, I don't have them available. Um, I can actually tell you where I got them from for these basic ones that I'm using. Um, TrapCG.com actually has a tutorial. Now what's funny is their tutorial that they have, um, the guy's character is way too big for his game. Whereas I have the opposite problem. The one that I made was too small, but he wasn't made specifically with um, uh, UDK in mind. So, um, But <laughs> theirs was, but their character um, is the wrong size. So, And the guy goes over that and says he, he's got to fix it. But um, these are free to watch. You can see the um, URL here. But they've got the... Um, they make the scripts and stuff available. Uh, I don't like how they have it, so if I want to copy and paste any of this, um, it's got all these spaces in here. So I went through and cleaned it all up um, in my... Uh, and I'm using Unreal X editor um, to do all my um, Unreal script, but I went through and deleted out all the extra spaces and stuff, so it's nice and cleaned up and kind of organized. Um, but yeah, that's basically it.